Okay, in this lab I want to talk about footprinting and reconnaissance utilities. Let's talk about the ping command. So what I'm going to do is open up a command line terminal here and uh, just really maximize this to get the, the best use of our space. Um, the basic functionality of this tool is to really just test connectivity between the source and the destination. There's a variety of different ways in which the protocol can be used. You can, uh, depending on what utility or where you're actually doing it from, meaning a host or a router or a switch, etc., or Unix box, um, really depends on the protocol used. And you could use a packet sniffer to realistically look at um, exactly how this happens. But we're going to take a look here briefly on a Windows client. For the most part, it's all basically the same. You do get uh, some results that are different, like I said, depending on what the source is. But uh, from a Windows client, we're simply going to go to the command prompt and we're going to type in ping space forward slash question mark. And we're going to see what types of options we have on Windows. So as we review this, you can see that there's a, um, a TAC T. Um, this basically just forces ping to operate and keep pinging and pinging and pinging and pinging and pinging until you tell it to stop. There's dash A or TAC A for uh, resolving the actual IP address to a host name. There's um, TAC N if you only want a particular number of responses to come back. You can set the buffer size or the size of the packet going across from the source and the de destination using a dash L. You can do an F for fragment. You can do a TAC R for record the route, but that only works for IP version 4 only. You have a TAC W, which is for the timeout value actually in milliseconds. Uh, you also can specify whether you want to use uh, IP version 4 or more importantly version 6 since that is likely to be on the upcoming horizon. So don't forget you can set ping to operate in IPv6 mode by just adding a dash 6 to it. So let's go ahead and clear our screen and then just take example, take a few examples of, of what this looks like. So I'm going to type in ping www.leodragger.com and you can see that I'm going to get basically four responses back and you can see that leodragger.com is being hosted um, at the IP address 199, 195, 119.130. I can also do this kind of in reverse if I want to. I could do a ping dash A 199, 195 119.130 and hit enter and it'll try to resolve this uh, in the reverse way and if it can come up with a name it will in this case the only thing that we're able to find here is that it's actually being hosted at uh, server 10 at supercp.com so that's helpful in some of the things that I would look for also you can see that the the size right here is routinely 32 if I look down that column here you can see that the timeout values um, are constantly in the middle seconds and they average right around 40 which you know is pretty I would say normal um, and then also the the time to live which is the number of hops along the lot route until it'll time out and in this case 56 which is more than enough to get to this destination we also get a summary sent here and it says, you know, it sent four packets, it received four packets, and um, at 0% loss. Uh, other values here would be 100% loss. Um, every now and then you'll get something that's dropped, you know, uh, maybe it'll drop one out of the four, and it'll come up with, you know, something like, you know, 25% loss or 50% or 75 And then again, is using it depending on the number of actual ICMP types and codes that actually sent across. So that's the basic uh, construct of the ping command. Now we can also do this a couple different ways and actually see you know this this command used differently and this is what I would go more into the intermediate or advanced style labs. So what we can do is we can ping www.leodragger.com. In this case we're going to add an F and then the load size of 
1500. And you'll see here what comes back. It says packets need to be fragmented, but the defragmented bit is set. So sometimes we can use that to our advantage and just learn a little bit about what goes on between our source and our destination. Now, in this case, there's likely to be a firewall between the source and destination, uh, and that's pretty indicative of basically not allowing the fragment uh, bit to, to, to set. But what we could do here is we could change this. I could change this to like 1200 for the load size and you can see that I actually get responses when I set my load size to 1200 but I don't get them when the load size is at 1500 and again both I'm telling fragment both of these packets so at 1500 it um, the packet needs to be fragmented but at 1200 it, di it didn't so what I realistically could do is I could kind of just start guessing at this point and see exactly where it starts timing out and where it stops timing out. So I'm just kind of incrementing up here, you know, went from 1200 to 1300 to 1400 and then I'll go to 1499 and you can see oh, 1499 is, is too high but 1400 was too low. So we'll just kind of, we could keep doing this until we got to right at that happy medium. So there's 1450, it worked. We could jump up here to 1475, and we realistically could dial this in. So it's going to be somewhere between 450 and 475. So let's try 1460. So it's above 1460. So let's do 1466. Sixty-eight. 69 and we basically we're going to keep doing this until we get to that point where we know exactly where it is 70 71 72 73 and there you go so right between 1472 um, which I got a reply versus 1473 and which I did not get a, a reply that's the basically the, the magic number and what I would be looking for. Um, and so that's that's some pretty good <laughs> some pretty good information right there in terms of learning about between what goes on in the source and the destination uh, in trying to find out exactly how things are configured because remember there's going to be a lot of variables in between wherever you currently are versus wherever your destination currently is so I'm going to go ahead and uh, clear the screen and we're going to do a couple other things here let's try pinging with a dash n in this case I'm going to do a dash n too www.leodrager.com and you can see in this case the number of times um, realistically check this out uh, one time it went through and the other time it timed out at a 50% loss so we can just run that again and see if there's an anomaly there um, and it probably was considering this time I ran it again. Uh, so interestingly enough, you can see that I dropped the packet uh, right there. Other things we can do, ping, let's go back to help. Let's look at the um, uh, uh, tack I. Yeah, and it depends. Sometimes you have a tack I, sometimes you don't. It really just depends on what version of Windows you have. Um, so we could do a ping, tack I, and then the number four, and then www.leodragger.com. And you can see that the I actually expired and transit. So I is specifically for the, the time to live. So I can set that. So in this case, um, um, the route is above um, uh, four hops away between me and my destination. And I could slowly start tweaking this to see exactly when you know I get a response and when I don't. And that tells you what, kind of how far you are between you and your destinations in terms of the number number of hops. So I'd want to dial this in. You know, normally I would do something like tack I1, see if I get a response, then two, then three, then four, then five, and then see when and exactly where um, they're timing out. And that could go all the way up realistically to 100 here. Uh, but you see if I did it at I equals 10, I get a reply. But if I did it down in, at six, I, um, I timed out.
So we'll just, uh, for giggles here, we'll do eight. That seems to be right in the middle, and we'll see if that gets a reply. And then that tells us on average, and, and eight looks like it's timing out. So that's a little bit about the ICMP utility, or the ping utility. Ping is really the front uh, end. Most of the time, it's ICMP that goes across. So just in summary, we use the uh, TAC I for uh, time to live, the N for the number in which you actually want. We could have done a T. It's easy to show you a T real quick. Tech T. That'll just keep uh, doing it until basically I tell it to stop. And you can see it's beyond the, the traditional four, so that's enough there. You can also add in uh, a dash A for host name resolution. So what I encourage you to do here is realistically get to know the utilities instead of just looking at these utilities like, um, you know, ping. Okay, ping an IP address. Really get intimate with the utilities by looking at all of the options.